Today I'm discussing the uh, Euler equations in regards to rigid body dynamics and rotation of rigid bodies. Uh, so what we what we might have is we might have some principal axes on some rigid body, uh, you know, x hat or y hat, uh, z hat. That's just some blob that's rotating on some axis h some angular velocity at any given time, omega. So what we know is analogous to Euler, or, um, sorry, Newton's laws, uh, you know, F equals the change in momentum with respect to time. We also find that when working with rotations, the input torque is equal to change in angular momentum over time. So angular momentum is defined as the moment of inertia times omega. So in order to find this, we need to break this down, um, but there are a few issues with this. Uh, so I is a function of T. Uh, let, me, let me actually rewrite that out a little bit. We have I as a function of T. We have omega as a function of t, right? We can't assume that we have a constant uh, moment of inertia here. So we need to apply chain rule for this. Uh, so we end up finding that dl dt is equal to di dt omega plus d omega dt i. Now this part right here, we're fine with that. We can just step away from that, we're all good. However, with, with the moment of inertia, we have to take into account that this will be changing. We can't just assume that it is going to be, you know, a constant change over time. Uh, we, we assume that with, with angular velocity there, or sorry, um, rotational velocity, because we only assume second order um, angular uh, differentiation. So we're only working worrying about acceleration, right? But but we can't we can't really make an analogous assumption when dealing with the moment of inertia here. So we need to take our three by three uh, inertia tensor, and yeah, remember it's it's in the world coordinates here. What we need to do is we need to then recall how to transform from body coordinates to world coordinates. Now notice here that we have these terms, these these epsilon or these these epsilons, e's, whatever you want to call them, that represent the rotation from the body frame of reference to the world frame of reference. And notice how these both have uh, dependency on time. So once again, we need to apply chain rule. So we're going to split this down, and what we end up with is d epsilon dt ib epsilon t plus epsilon i, the body frame of reference, uh, d epsilon transposed over dt. So now we're left with this mess. Uh, so what does this mean for us? Well, we can't just plug this straight back in. We need to also look at what our uh, d epsilon dt means. Um, and I will not do the proof here, but take my word for it that d epsilon of dt is just the angular velocity crossed with epsilon t. So we can plug that back in. So what we end up with is omega cross with IB. Remember these, these rotations will actually drop out. Omega cross with the body here, plus IB omega cross. So now we can go back to the original equation that we pulled up here. So we can say DL dt is equal to i, I apologize, this should be body, 
Mega there. Um, no, no, I take that back. That that should not be. Mega plus our stuff that we just derived here. Uh, omega cross IB plus I omega cross omega all the way out there. Um, so, oh, that should not actually be body. Um, so, right, because we, we've, we've applied our, um, we've applied this down there, the epsilon t uh, times ib times epsilon transpose. So, right, because epsilon i the epsilon transpose is just the moment of inertia tensor in the worldview, right? And again, because we then say d epsilon dt i b epsilon transpose is just mega cross all that, and that just comes out to i. So going back down here, this cancels out because any vector or any vector uh, cross with itself is zero. So what we are left with is uh, uh, torque with regards or uh, due to um, uh, angular acceleration and then a cross term due to changes within the body frame of view. And that is the Euler's equation of rotational motion.